riding a brand new motorcycle for just an hour on unfamiliar roads to an unknown destination doesn't offer much insight. This becomes even more apparent when you find yourself navigating the aero straight roads of Florida during the chaos of Daytona Bike Week, all while riding a pre-production model. Factor in that this is the yet-to-be-validated version of Buell Motorcycles 2025 Super Cruiser, and any detailed evaluation seems like wishful thinking. Discussions about final specifications, finishes, or potential mechanical issues are essentially irrelevant at this stage. The focus is primarily on understanding the riding experience the Super Cruiser is expected to deliver. So, instead of delving into a comprehensive analysis, let's delve into our initial impressions of Buell's latest model, Super Cruiser Concept. For those who may have missed its unveiling, the new Roland Sands designed Super Cruiser made its debut to the public in February 2023. Sands recounts being given the directive to incorporate as much of Buell's standard rolling kit as possible in his initial meetings with Buell CEO Bill Melvin. As a result, everything from the 1,190 cubic centimeters liquid-cooled ET, V2 V-twin engine, to the adjustable fork, to the 17-inch alloy wheels with the signature perimeter braking system finds its place on the Super Cruiser. The challenge lay in integrating those components into a cruiser-style design requiring Sands to engineer his own steel tube frame while ensuring compatibility with the Buell 1190 platform swing arm, fork, wheels, and brake system. The styling inspiration for the Super Cruiser is unmistakably drawn from the FXR. It adopts the profile of Harley-Davidson's iconic model and infuses it with a West Coast Cruiser aesthetic, resulting in what Sands describes as a superbike-powered high-performance club-style bike. Elements such as blacked-out components, tall bars, and a quarter fairing allude to this club vibe. However, the Super Cruiser, at least in its current iteration, shares substantial mechanical similarities with the current generation Hammerhead 1190RX Superbike, itself largely based on Eric Buell's 1190RX from 2014. Although the 72-degree Rotax Helicon V-twin derived engine has undergone significant updates since then, regardless, the Buell slash RSD concept bike stirred considerable excitement leading to eager buyers placing an unprecedented $120 million in pre-orders once the opportunity arose. Fast forward to 2024, where our pre-ride briefing with Buell Motorcycle CEO Melvin provides a walkthrough of the pre-production model before embarking on our journey to the quieter countryside, away from the bustling crowds. The Super Cruiser's FXR influence is evident in its appearance, featuring an aerodynamic quarter fairing, a wide and shapely 4.5-gallon fuel tank, raised handlebars, and a tall, one-piece seat. This version closely resembles the concept RSD bike, though it's notable that the ET V2 motor occupies considerable space in the frame and lacks the traditional cruiser aesthetics of machined fins and chrome covers. It is anticipated that the routing of hoses and wires will be refined before production, although the engine isn't the most visually appealing in its segment. Buell's decision to opt for a black radiator cover on this bike rather than the aluminum RSD piece showcased on the concept, is a prudent one. Additionally, the pre-production model sports the same exhaust system as the 1190 platform, along with similar intakes. Melvin notes slight differences in the tune due to the Super Cruiser's use of main port injectors without the secondary shower head injectors found on the Hammerhead Superbike. From a logistical standpoint, this decision makes perfect sense as it significantly reduces the fledgling company's expenditure on research and development as well as production costs. At the front end, the Super Cruiser incorporates RSD-designed risers featuring standard spacing patterns, commonly found on numerous HD models. This design choice enables customers to utilize other compatible aftermarket parts if they desire. The bike we tested was equipped with adjustable O-Lean's front and rear suspension, although Melvin hinted that these may not be included in the final version. He mentioned that the suspension would undergo a few adjustments to accommodate riders of varying heights. On the road with the Super Cruiser Mounting the Super Cruiser is far from the experience of straddling a typical lowrider. True to its marketing, there's a palpable sense of edginess as you climb aboard. Whether it's because of the bike's elevated stance, the taller and narrower handlebars within reach, or the mid-mount controls. The riding position offers a commanding view, 
with upright ergonomics that lack the relaxed demeanor typically associated with classic cruisers, though your arms rest slightly bent at the elbows. Our test model features a one-piece saddleman seat boasting a sharp, right-angle bolster in club-style fashion. It sits a bit high for my 30-inch inseam but proves manageable at stops and provides ample support during quick launches. Melvin mentions that the company is also developing a seat with a more tapered nose to facilitate easier ground reach for the rider. Engage the rather generic-looking starter, and the powerful engine roars to life, rumbling and popping beneath you. It idles restlessly, then surges off idle, tempting you to unleash its power. As you roll on the throttle and the revs climb, the engine responds with a subtle growl in the mid-range. Power is abundant throughout, but the true surge is felt beyond 5,000 RPM, where the torque curve peaks. Beyond 8,000 RPM, the thunderous roar intensifies, and you find yourself rapidly approaching triple-digit speeds, all while still in third gear. When you consider that this engine is derived from the formidable 1190RX Superbike, its capabilities become clearer. The 2014 EBR model generated 161.2 horsepower at 10,530 RPM and 87.1 pound FT at 8,100 RPM on the Cycle World Dyno, with subsequent updates. The current iteration of the Super Cruiser is claimed to produce 175 horsepower, and while torque figures are not yet finalized, we anticipate it will approach the 100 pound FT MR quoted for the brand Superbike. With ample torque available throughout the rev range, the Super Cruiser offers more than enough power for everyday street riding. On the highway, the bike is user-friendly, featuring a wet, hydraulically actuated clutch that engages smoothly and a gearbox that shifts with precision. Melvin mentions the availability of a quick shifter option as well. The suspension feels balanced, offering a firm yet compliant ride, with adjustments available to tailor the settings to individual preferences. While our test route mainly consisted of straight roads, the Super Cruiser's nimbleness, aided by its 450-pound weight and lightweight 17-inch wheels, was evident. The bike's braking performance is impressive, thanks to the EBR rim brakes providing ample stopping power, with the rear brake also proving competent, although ABS is not included. Regarding creature comforts, the focus of this bike lies elsewhere. The cockpit is compact, featuring narrow bars with standard switchgear and a basic TFT display providing essential information, including a bar-type tachometer and digital speed readout. While the mini fairing offers some protection to the torso, riders will still experience wind blast at helmet level. If you're seeking a spirited ride, the Super Cruiser delivers in spades. A brief half-day ride covering less than 100 miles on straight roads only scratches the surface of what the SC is capable of, 